Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Planet Zoo, shall we? Resuming our complete beginner's guide with our aardvarks. So immediately what I'm going to do is talk about how to make our aardvarks happy in their new home. And also, as we've got animals, oh my gosh, look at the front of the zoo. We have guests coming right in. Okay, so we already have guests coming, so we need to work on several things to make everything happen correctly in Planet Zoo. So the first thing we want to do is click on our animal, okay? Now, when you click on one of the animals, all right, it will highlight the animal, okay? And it will outline it in white. And you can then get good information from this panel that pops out, including its name, which is Jabulani, okay? And I'm going to rename this aardvark um, something fun, you know, uh, which is... Artie. So we've got Artie over here, who is a 7.1 year old male. Now, what you want to do immediately is look at the welfare tab, and you want the overall welfare to be green. Right now we're in yellow, and the nutrition is okay, the social is great, the habitat is okay, and the enrichment is terrible. Now, right now, we can't do too much about enrichment because you're going to need to research more specific uh, things that you can build enrichment items for aardvarks. And you don't know what those are yet, but we have some general things that we can build to boost this, okay? Nutrition, I'll show you how to affect that, and habitat is what we're going to focus on here. So very quickly, if you click on the habitat itself, you can... Um, adjust the nutrition by going to the animals tab, which looks like a paw print. So we're on Aardvark Home, you go to the animals tab, and here it says food quality. Now right now, we can't make their nutrition better because we only have grade one food quality. But once we do more research on Aardvarks, we'll be able to give them better quality food. It'll be more expensive, but it will raise that statistic, okay? Now, the other thing is their habitat. And if you click on this, okay, and expand the habitat, it'll show you the problem isn't the cleanliness, it's not the temperature, it's not the plants, it's that they don't have a hard shelter, which is a place to sleep in, and the terrain is not appropriate for them because of the distribution of grass, dirt, long grass, whatever it is that they want. So let's talk about the terrain first. So on the animal tab, okay, oh, we didn't save Jabulani's name. Hey, it's Artie. Remember that. There we go. Now it's saved. Um, you have to push enter after you type it in to save it there. Let's go to the terrain tab. And this is going to tell you what the problems are, okay? So Artie is saying, all right, I have enough space, okay, I'm fine, but... My problems are that there's not enough short grass, there's too much long grass, and there's not enough soil. Now, how do I know that? You can see that these white bars are the target range for how much short grass they have. These white, this white bar here is the target range for the distribution of long grass, and this is soil. So all we need to do is change the terrain distribution to have more short grass and more soil, and by extension, we'll have less long grass for them and make them happier. They're okay with rock. They're okay with sand. Okay, so these are all fine, and they don't need snow. So how do we do that? Well, we need to click on the terrain tab in the bottom right. Okay, so I just click on this, and it defaults to the painting tool, and that's what we want. We want terrain painting, and these are different options that you can paint a.k.a. affect the terrain by changing it. Um, and so if we want short grass, okay, I can click here. Now, um, you'll notice then immediately in this circle, I am painting, okay, a giant swath that is basically taking out all of the long grass and replacing it with short grass. Now, this is free. This does not cost any money to do. So you can really tweak this to your heart's desire. 
you can change, okay, using the square brackets, the size of your brush. And you can also change the intensity if you don't want it to be, um, you know, all or nothing. I like to have it full intensity. It just makes it easier for me. And you'll get used to it. But if you just left click, you'll notice that some of the grass goes away. But if you hold it down, everything within that circle will eventually get painted off. Okay. So now this is dynamically updating to reflect what we've done. Already, we've given them enough short grass and put the long grass into a uh, acceptable range, but we don't have any soil. So you can go and select these different options. If you mouse over them, it'll tell you what they are in the terrain painting screen. So here it says soil heavy, soil light, you know, and we're just going to go with light soil. And I'm going to put it where there's some long grass, okay, over here. Because I know that I can take out long grass and they won't care. And now I'm going to paint this in really heavy over here. We have a good distribution of soil. I'm actually going to just do a little bit more, make it nice for them so that everything is kind of within this range. I can even give them some more short grass over here like that. And then everything now is very, very good. All of the terrain distribution is in green. They just need a hard shelter, okay? So I'm just walking you through these activities one by one. You don't have to go in this order, of course. You can do it however you like. But if we want to solve this problem, we need to build them a hard shelter. And how do we do that? Okay, we go into the habitat screen, all right? And in the habitat screen, this will show you all of the items that you can build within a habitat that are prefab or your own construction. Now, we want to focus on beds and shelters. So right now, we're on the Infinity tab, which is everything that we can possibly build within a habitat. And let's just go to beds and shelters. And now we're only looking at hard shelters and beds. And let's find a hard shelter that is the appropriate size for this animals. It needs to be big enough, okay, that all of the aardvarks can fit in here comfortably. So to do that, let's just try to find something um, that is reasonable for these animals. They're not enormous, okay? So what if I built, um, oh, this one. So this is a wood basic shelter, okay? So it has this wood finish. And I'm going to just kind of put it over here in the corner so that they can sleep here if they want to get out of people's eyesight a little bit, potentially. Now, the thing about this, I'm going to zoom in on the top. If I put it here, I can push Z to rotate this around, okay, at 90 degrees. But let's talk about how to use place things um, more specifically. So if I want to place something with more control, I can push X. And X brings up this other placement tool, which is fantastic. It just takes a moment to understand how to use it, okay? So when you push X once, you will see that there are X, Y, and Z axes that emerge, and they're colored um, differently, so you can easily see them, okay? So you've got your... your um, a Z axis going up and down or whatever axis you want to call that your vertical axis your green then you've got um, you know left and right up and down with red and blue and all you have to do is just mouse over one of these and then hold left click and move it up and down and you can move this up and down wherever you want do you want to move it left and right okay you can hold left click while selecting the red axes and then move it like this okay all right but you can also use some of these tabs um, to switch how you do this or the move mode but if you push X again it changes to this ring and this ring allows you to click and drag okay to rotate this however you want now if you click off angle snap okay now you have free power to rotate this in whatever way you want. And this is what I like, just free rotation. So I'm kind of moving the camera around so that I can get a good look at this structure. I, I'm happy with where it is, okay? I'm gonna push X again, 
and I'm going to grab the blue and I'm just going to slide this back a little bit more toward the wall and use the red to put it there. And once I'm happy with where this goes, I just click the check mark to build it. This only costs 140 bucks. Boom. All right. Now I've built a hard shelter. I'm going to unpause the game for a moment and quickly pause it again by pushing P. You have to unpause the game for the hard shelter to dynamically update to get information. And you can see that this is good enough. It's not perfect. They might want a slightly bigger shelter, but for now, this is doing the job for us. So now if I look at the animal and I go to the overview, look how his welfare has gone green because we've given his habitat just about a perfect score. We can't affect nutrition yet, but we can affect enrichment. So now that we're in, we're still in the habitat build screen. Let's go to enrichment items. It looks like a soccer ball with a post next to it. And then you can click on this. All right. And now you're building enrichment items. But what you want to do, okay, is filter these. All right. For the species. Okay. So we're going to filter this. All right. So you click the cone for filter. You unpack the species button and you select aardvark. Now you're looking at aardvark specific enrichment and you'll notice nothing shows up. And that is because we have not done the appropriate research. So we cannot effectively boost their enrichment right now, but their welfare is good enough, okay? So let's go over to the other animal and um, we can name her. Her name right now is Abimbola, um, but we can call her, um, you know, Snoutina. And we've got Artie and Snoutina in here as our aardvarks, okay? What we want to do at this point is quickly jump over to the research panel. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to research building. All right. And I'm going to say, okay, this is our research center. And um, nobody's working here because the staff haven't gone here because they aren't assigned any research to do. So what we want to do is go into the zoo screen. Okay, so we're going to click zoo. We can push number one or, um, or the zoo button. And then we're going to go down here to where it says vet research. Okay, so you'll see like a beaker with a paw pad next to it. And from this screen, you can tell your vets to research either a specific animal or a disease or illness that animals can get. All of this stuff is good to research. Like if you research, um, you know, avian influenza, for example, you will be better at identifying and treating avian influenza. But right now we want to focus on researching the aardvark. So I'm going to um, click on the aardvark and you can see that if we research the aardvark, um, if we can get to level one, we'll find some food enrichment for the aardvark. We'll be able to get better food for the aardvark and we'll learn some fun facts that we can educate our guests on. So in order to do research, okay, we hired a vet in the previous episode. You just select the vet, Manuel Feliciano, okay? And you just click them and drag them over. And you'll see that there's an upward green arrow with a spinning dashed circle. And you just drop them on here. And then now it'll tell you this vet is working on the research. Now, each staff member gets a rating from one to five stars based on their skill level. And Manuel is not very good. Manuel is new. We just got him here. So he's not going to research very quickly, but he will get better as he works and as we train them. Okay. So right now, we now have someone doing research. And let's also, while we're here, go to the mechanics research. Okay. And we have our um, mechanic that we hired, Ginger Creech. And Ginger can do research for us as well. And so what do we want to research? I recommend... 100% that what you focus on researching first are barriers because barriers will let you um, contain stronger animals, climbing animals, and also build um, two-way glass, which uh, or one-way glass, I should say, which is what we really, really want for our shy animals, okay? So we're going to go here, and we're just going to 
have ginger research barriers. All right, so now we have that happening. Okay, um, and here's our animals. You can click on the animal screen. You can t also just get a quick glance at their over at their uh, welfare, and they're good. All right, so we've assigned some research, and I'm just going to push one to close that up. Now the animals are as happy as possible with our current levels inside their habitat. We have guests coming in already. Okay, so these guests are all getting ready to come into the zoo and we need to give them a good experience so it's time to make our zoo more pleasant for guests how do we do that okay we're going to go to the facilities button right here all right and in the facilities button okay the first thing we want to do is on the all tab you can see it very quickly at the top now you're in any of these screens, what you see might vary based on what DLCs you have purchased, okay? And if you've done any research. I'm playing with Vanilla Planet Zoo, updated to the latest version. I also have the Aquatic Animals Pack, okay, and the Arctic Pack. Um, but overall, most of what you see should be the same. And remember, I have nothing researched. What you want to find are donation boxes. Okay, now, if you can't find them on your list, you can also just search for donation box. Okay, you can just start typing it in up here on the top ribbon in the search bar. And if you want donation box, you can also favorite them by clicking the heart. And then you can filter by favorites. Okay. And what we want is a donation box. All right. And I want to put a donation box right here. And I want to put a donation box over here. Don't worry. It looks like the donation box is clipping through the wall. It's fine. There's no problem. It's not doing anything bad. I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to put another one over here. Okay. So I've put a bunch of donation boxes around. Why have I done that? Donation boxes are the best way to make money from your guests in franchise mode. They, you might think they look tacky um, and you don't want to put down that many. I understand that, but I put as many as possible because this is the, the number one way to make money. Ticket prices are good, but donation boxes are where it's at. All right, so get these down quickly so you can make some money to upgrade your zoo, buy better animals, um, build more fancy stuff, all of that. All right, if you want to be financially solvent, you need donation boxes. Now, after that, what you can do, all right, is you can also click on favorites, and there are two signs, do not feed and do not disturb, okay? Now, if we build do not disturb signs, this can help with our shy animals, okay? This will tell our guests to not tap on the glass, not be as loud around them, okay? And I'm going to build some of these right now. Now, if I build one do not disturb sign, for example, all right, and I click on this, notice that, okay, if I push the heat map, all right, and I go into um, security and crime, you'll see that this do not disturb sign has an area of influence. So I don't really need to put one over here because they will get this message as long as they're within this blue range. The other blue range that we're seeing in security and crime is just wherever our security guard is watching. Now this is important because um, you don't want people to get pickpocketed or people to vandalize your zoo. So your security guard will start patrolling and just keep your zoo safe. All right. So right now, I'm going to build another do not disturb sign and just try to get some good coverage. I don't need to maximize it necessarily, but I can do this and hopefully this will help keep the animals a little bit protected from the eyeballs of the guests. Now we'll see how that goes. Okay. Now, once we're done doing that, I want to go over here and I want to click on um, guest facilities. It looks like a vendor booth. Okay. 
And from the Guest Facilities tab, I can open this up and we can start building things that we feel guests will need. All right, here's what I recommend. Click the Finance tab right away, unclick Favorites. You're gonna want an ATM. ATMs are magical things because they give your people more money to spend. Every guest will come with a set amount of money in their wallet, and they can spend all of that in your zoo. But if you put an ATM out, they can go beyond what the money they have is and buy more stuff, okay? So I'm going to put an ATM right there. Plain as day, they can get money out. I'm only going to build one for right now, okay? And next... Let's go ahead and think about our guests are going to get hungry and they're going to get thirsty. Now, we don't need to go wild with this, all right? But I am going to build a little area right here that is going to be a place for guests to come and eat, okay? So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to make a little path, okay? And I'm just going to extend this path going straight and I'm gonna angle snap it at 90 degrees, keep it nice and straight like that. And then I'm gonna just um, push nine to stop building a path. And now I have a little, you know, branch in my main path where I can start building some facilities for the staff. So I'm first going to build a um, gulpy soda. Now you can build a Planet Zoo drink shop if you want for 500 extra bucks, um, but I'm just building really generic looking stuff as we're starting out now with these things you do not at all need to worry about negative impact on guests because guests want this so this is you can build this right by the path i'm going to build it right here so that it connects to the main path and i'm going to build it pretty close to the main path so people can see it it's easy access if people get thirsty. Now, the reason I'm not building it as close to the path as possible is to just allow for some space for a queue to develop. As your zoo gets bigger, you're going to need to consider the fact that your guests are going to want to queue up and you might want to build bigger lines. But for now, this is fine. I'm also going to be uh, build myself a chief beef, okay, which is like a hamburger shop. Next door to that. All right. And that's good now there's some other options in here okay i would click food stalls you could build a bernie's bakes counter if you want or a chief beef counter but these require a restaurant okay um so i'm instead just going to build these structures where people can come and, and purchase takeaway you can also build vending machines okay vending machines are cheaper all of these vendor buildings that I'm creating are hiring a staff. So they come with an employee to work at them. And that's good so that somebody works there, but it has drawbacks, which is that we have to pay that staff member so they have more running cost. And we have to have enough of a staff room to accommodate all of these staff on breaks. But I don't recommend building vending machines necessarily right out of the gate uh, because they require a lot of maintenance to upkeep and... Um, you can build them later. I like to start with just having these facilities. All right, so we've got a place to eat and a place to drink. Remember, our zoo is super small. We don't need a lot. I'm going to build um, one vendor shop, which is a Looney Balloons, okay? And I'm going to just turn this and rotate it and build it right here. And I'm also going to build a information center the information center is amazing because people can purchase like guided tours, um, audio tours rather, but they also can buy umbrellas so that if it's raining, they can get an umbrella from the information center and not be unhappy uh, because of the rain. All right. So now we've built a few places for people to go spend money and satisfy hunger and thirst, but we also need to think about, oh, hunger and thirst, they have other needs to satisfy, and that would be going to the bathroom. So you really want to build a toilet block, all right? So let's build ourselves a toilet block, um, and I can just put this right here, okay? So now we have a place for people to go to the bathroom. Um, we have uh, a merchandise 
location. We have drinks. We have food. We built an ATM. That's a great start. One other thing that you can build if you want, okay, if we go back to guest facilities and we go to, um, you know, all facilities, okay, we might want to build a place for people to sit down, but it doesn't go in guest facilities. I'll show you where that is in a moment. But before we do that, I'm going to exit the group, okay, that we were building over here. And I just kept it all in one group because this is just one little guest area. We need to build some more stuff to make our habitat complete. What I always build, okay, um, on our habitat are um, screens. Okay, so what we want are habitat education boards. Now, I'm just back in the all tab, and they're very close to the top. You can either put them on legs or you can stick them right on the habitat itself. I'm going to just buy the ones that stick to the habitat. Now, I'm going to just say, okay, we have a little screen, and if you put this up on the wall, it will automatically try to snap to the wall. I put these in as many places as I can so that guests receive education. Guests want to be educated about the animals that they're seeing, and their experience increases as they're educated. So I like to have tons and tons of these screens. They're not that expensive, okay? Once I've built that, all right, I can look around and I'm gonna show you what you do. You go ahead and um, we're gonna push facilities to close this and I'm gonna just click on the screen. When I click on this habitat information board, it's gonna say educational content. I'm gonna say aardvark. It will let you select animals that are nearby okay and so now we have aardvark and i am happy with that these boards will provide better education the more research level you have and the more information you have to share about aardvarks i don't have a lot but i can at least tell people what animal is in here all right and i'm just going to all of these and selecting aardvark now you might think this is really tedious to select aardvark from all of these education boards and it is so what you can do, once you have selected, once you've created a screen with Aardvark on it, is you can simply copy it, okay? Um, or I guess I should say duplicate, all right, with Control D. And now I'm gonna build another TV and I'm gonna put it right here, okay? But this one will already have Aardvark on it. So now we've got a screen that has Aardvark on it. So we're now telling our people, okay, what animal is in here? We're telling them to be quiet. We're giving them places to donate money. We've also created an ATM, a information center, a souvenir shop, and a food and the drink stall and a bathroom. All right, so things are looking great, but not just yet. I'm gonna go to bins, benches, and security in the facilities tab, okay? And from here, all right, we're gonna wanna create benches. Now we can't do a whole lot just yet, but I'm going to make some places for people to be able to sit down, okay? If people get tired, they need to rest. And so I like to build places where people can sit, maybe even look at the animals if they want, okay? These are not expensive, and they allow you to just give your people a place to take a break. You can always delete or remove these later, but this is just something that I enjoy doing at the start you know, people want to wait for friends and family going to the bathroom on the bench. And now we have a bunch of benches. The final thing that we want to build right here are um, uh, bins for both trash and recycling. Okay. So I'm just going to throw these everywhere. If you don't put a place for people to throw things away, they will just throw their litter on the ground. Okay. So you want to just get in the habit of having enough bins. I put them by benches, anywhere where people are walking. Um, and you can tidy these up later if you like, but I just like to have a ton of these. All right, like every every opportunity I can. And then we can also throw in some um, recycling locations too, so that people can um, be green, recycle their stuff, all right, and throw things away. You can put them together however you want. Again, I will fine-tune and adjust these as we get more, 
But for now, I just want to have enough trash and recycling. And I'm going to unpause the game. All right, and I'm going to close the facilities tab and just zoom in and see what happens as people come into our zoo, okay? Remember, we have some challenges. We need two different species, and we've got some more challenges. Have at least 300 guests. Make a yearly profit of $2,000, okay? So let's check it out. So people are already coming over here, and you can see that these booths are staffed. You can click on the staff that's inside here um, and just see who is working here uh, and find out, like, hey, this is Melissa Nobles, all right? And she's working there. She's only level one, but she's going to get better, presumably, all right? Now look at this. Look how many people we have here. We have 120 people. We're down to $9,800, and our zoo is losing money, okay? Now that's bad, but that's to be expected. <laughs> that's why we don't spend all our money, all right? So, once we're here, what you can do is just click on a person and see what they think of the zoo. So right now, they're not getting good education, okay? And they're not getting... Um, they're fine on all of their other needs. And you can click at, look at their recent thoughts. The ticket prices are great. Let's pause the game. Click Zoo go to finances okay and you can get a breakdown of your entire like ins and outs of your money but go to the zoo overview and this is where you can check um your operating hours okay and your ticket prices right now we're only charging three dollars a ticket and people are saying it's great so if you want to raise that you can another thing you can do is change your opening hours okay so that like you're never open at night if you don't like how the zoo looks at nighttime. Or what you can do is simply build lights. Okay, I'm going to just leave things be for the moment. But um, another thing I have forgotten to build is with our education. All right, we're just going to go back to facilities and we're going to go to all facilities and we need to build education speakers. And in this way, we can connect these to the signs and you just build them, okay? And I'm gonna close this for a moment and I'm gonna show you. You can click on the speaker and we're gonna change this to Aardvark Education, okay? And then now they're hearing information about the Aardvark, which will educate them. And you can change the range on this to, and it will show you on the heat map how much education they're getting from this. Now, I don't want this range to go too big because if the range is so large and you have another exhibit and people are hearing stuff about aardvarks but they're seeing spiders, they're going to get confused and unhappy. So try to maintain these. I'm going to push Control D and I'm just going to build um, some more speakers around. And here you can see these speakers are overlapping. That is okay if it's the same information, but not okay if it's different information, all right? So I'm fine with this. I'm just clicking these roughly so that they attach to the wall and giving people education about aardvarks. I want these people to leave knowing so much about aardvarks that it's almost problematic, okay? Good. And there now i'm going to just push a, uh right click and h to close the heat map make sure these are all on aardvark they are and i'm going to unpause it so now they're all getting information about aardvarks okay i'm going to close this and let's see what they say you can see her education is slowly filling up like she's getting some education all right and you can check your cues okay the drink shop has a pretty good cue nobody's really eating but it's dark now if you're looking to build a light for your zoo because it's dark you will not find it in the facilities tab you need to jump over to the construction tab now a lot of these uh, construction items are helping you build things from the ground up do all kinds of really nuanced awesome um, specific builds piece by piece, block by block, but also there are some prefab items right here, like the Planet Zoo street lamp that you can throw in to provide lighting, okay? Now, these things, um, you will get better lights, uh, you know, as you go, 
uh, but right now we only have a little bit researched. So I'm just going to kind of push X, drop this in, and rotate it to provide light for people. Okay, I'm going to scooch it up. Um, not like that, sorry. I, want, I still want it there. I want it to just be a little bit closer like that. Yep. And I'm just going to say okay. And then I'm going to actually... Um, let's see here. Once you check mark, you can then just drag, if you're in the special placement and rotation screen with the X, you can just drag this away and then just build another one. Okay, and then go here like this. All right, by the way, you'll see that if you're placing an item that you can rotate on different axes, instead of um, just the green ring appearing, you'll see that there's a blue and a red ring, and you can play with these to tilt and rotate your uh, object that you're placing even more. I'm not doing that because I'm just placing a lamp, all right? But I'll build one, and then I'm just going to put, go over here and just kind of drag this around. Now, you can also just push move, if you want to just kind of grab it and pick it up, and then you can push X and then X and then rotate it like that. Okay, check mark, and then we'll just go and I could push M to move it. And we can build a lamp here and we can build a lamp here, but it's not rotated the way I want. So I'm just going to grab that green ring and, you know, rotate it like that. And then um, we're going to build another one, push M to kind of just put another lamp over here and then this is pretty good, but I need to rotate it so that it's facing like that. All right. And then I'm going to push M and I'm going to grab another one and just kind of, you know, continue providing people with light. Now you can change these, you can delete these, you can do whatever you want, but this is just a nice, simple way to get a little bit of light in your zoo. Okay. So that if you want to be open in the nighttime hours, you can do so and still see things. I like night, honestly. I think it just provides a different dynamic for the experience, but you also can adjust your opening and operating hours to make it so that there is no nighttime in your zoo when it's open and the guests will never experience um, night, if you wish. All right, and let's just kind of give everyone light. Rotate these around. Just build them, you know, like that. And that should be a pretty good amount of light. You can even get down here if you want and rotate this so that these people are in the spotlight. All right. And I'm just going to close the construction tab and zoom out. And you can see that there is indeed light all over the zoo. All right. So we have really, really done a lot in this episode. We've built habitat. We've accommodated it for the aardvarks. We have, um, and you can click on the aardvark to see how they're doing. And they're doing okay. The reason their habitat is dropping is because um, now the hard shelter seems to no longer be enough. So sometimes this will happen where it's like, well, wait a minute, I thought it was good, and they want more. So we might have to build them a bigger hard shelter. All right, the other thing you want to check out is their social in terms of their stress. But they seem to be doing okay that they're being seen by people. They're not getting upset by it so far, even though they're shy. So that's great. We built some guest facilities for an ATM machine. We have um, a bathroom. We have a welcome center. And... Everything because H for heat map, we built it within our power sphere. It all works, okay? You can see we're starting to push the boundaries of our current power system, but it's still good. So everyone, I hope you're still finding this guide on Planet Zoo to be helpful. Oh boy, I guess Balloon has flown away. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any specific questions, please post them in the comments below, and I'd love to help you out. Take care.